remember that program. It was, it was on telly years ago. It was called Fat Girls and Feeders. <laughs> and everyone was talking about it at the time. It was really, really gross. It was about these men that got off on like feeding up their women who just like stayed at home because they couldn't move. They were so big. And they'd go off to McDonald's and just get all this junk food and feed them up and really get off on it. I haven't thought about that for ages, but <laughs> I've basically become like one of them. No, no, we've all let ourselves go a bit in lockdown and all that. And well, I've put on quite a lot of weight, but my partner cooks for me, which I know what you're thinking. Yeah, oh, lovely. I wish I had a partner that cooked for me. But no, I have to eat the same portions that he has. And he's like what, six foot two and massive. So obviously I'm going to put on weight and, you know, I, I leave some of it. Um, but then he sort of puts the guilt on and he's saying, you know, there's people starving in the world. So, yeah, I have put on weight, yeah. <laughs> and do you know what? He looked at me the other day and he just had this smug look on his face and he said, you've put on weight. <laughs> and I thought, well, yeah, I know I have. Yeah, and you know, I know my clothes aren't fitting properly. I know I've put on weight, but <sighs> he took pleasure in it. And oh, and the irony is, you've never seen him with you. No. Well, he's fucking. Oh, sorry for swearing. He's massive. I'm not talking like big. Like I know I've got a bit of weight on me now, but he is like like thirty stone big. You know, <laughs> you can't see the irony. You know, I just felt like saying, you know, have you looked in the mirror lately? And I think he'd need two, to be quite honest. But yeah, lockdown hasn't been great. It's been pretty grim in the house. Um, I've always known he's a bit of a slob. And, you know, people are saying to me, yeah, you knew he was like that anyway. Well, yeah, I did, but I haven't been locked down with him. It's literally been, like, stuck in with Jabba the Hutt. I mean, it's just so gross, frankly. Um, <laughs> the toilet seats, they've all broken, because he's so big. So... I can't even go and have a bit of peace and quiet because he's constantly shouting and sit on the toilet because you just go like that because they're all broken. I, I tried to look into, you know, getting new ones, but um, apparently because of the weight, I'd have to get them from America because he's like 30 stone plus. So, yeah, you know, good luck finding that, getting a delivery in lockdown. The bed, he broke the bed. We had a new bed just before lockdown from Ikea. You know, it was the top of the range there. Um, and again, he doesn't get it. The bread broke, because he's so bloody, sorry for swearing, he's so fat. Um, but he can't see it. He was on the phone to Ikea, all um, shouty, he loves shouting. Telling them how awful it was, how disgusting it was, and he didn't just want his money back, he wanted more than his money for compensation. And I thought, thank God, this isn't the video call, you know, because it's like a joke, if they saw you, they'd know exactly why the bed's broken, you know? I mean, Jesus Christ, that bed doesn't see any other action. Oh, he'd like it to. He said to me, yeah, you know, you're not a proper wife and all this. But honestly, he actually, it does make me feel a bit sick. All those, like, rolls of fat, sweat. I don't think I'd even be able to find his little wiener under all that, honestly. But, it's, oh. but yeah, broke the bed. I mean, I've got friends that have orgies. Probably six of them on the bed don't break the bed. Yeah, and it, it's just so, 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 so gross. So I've been trying to get out of the house, get away from these arguments, you know? And to be honest, I know a lot of people in lockdown, I don't know if you've got a dog, but I've been going on the walks. The one walk we were allowed at first, you know? That's been my one little bit of bliss, my one little escape from this place. I love my dog so much. I don't, I don't know, like, that's not love that I have for my partner, that love from that dog, the way he looks at me, you know? And I'm home to him on the, the walks and I think he's the only person that listens to me, you know, and he looks up with his little beautiful little face. Anyway, so we'd come back from this walk. I was all calm and I just walked in and he was lying there like a big fat slug on the couch, you know. Plates built up. I don't know how many meals he'd had. I'd, I'd been out for a couple of hours, but I mean, plates, sweet wrappers thrown on the floor like a little baby. Can't even get up and put them in the bin. And a stink of shit, sorry, sorry, shit, sorry for swearing. Um, because I've asked him, and I know he eats a lot and it's coming out of him, it's gross in itself, 
But I've told him, just shut the downstairs bathroom door if you go to the toilet, you know? And leave the light on because it's got the extractor. But no, the whole house was stinking and he wasn't even getting up to clear himself. So I did shout to him. I did shout to him. I shouldn't have shouted to him, whatever. But I was so cross with this mess he'd left, you know? But of course you can't shout at him because of his nerves, because of his anxiety. Oh, you shouldn't, you tip me over the edge. You just came in and started shouting at me for no reason. And oh, he's always gonna kill himself because of what I've, I've done something to make him kill himself. Oh, I've just told him to not live like a baby and live and put your bloody rubbish, sorry, for, in the bin, no? <sighs> sorry, I'm getting upset now, but so, so yeah, I just said that to him. And that apparently, oh, he got up because he was so upset and he disappeared. We were worried sick. I was on the phone to his mum. She was worried because he's been saying, you know, he's going to kill himself. So anyway, I eventually drove round, found him sitting on the park bench, eating, of course. He'd just been to the shop. He was sitting there on his Facebook. I could see it glowing in the dark. He was Facebook and eating. He looked fine. Well, anyway, when he came back, of course, he said, oh, I tipped him over the edge and he'd gone to the dual carriageway and walked down the tube. He was going to kill himself down the dual carriageway. I mean, I don't think anyone does that, you know, to people, I don't know, but I mean, it's like walking into the sea or something. It's so dramatic. I don't believe he'd do that, you know? Jesus Christ, the size on him. I mean, if he did walk, I don't think anything would miss him. <sighs> but yeah, it's all my fault. It's, I just can't live like this. It's just miserable. And, you know, it's just not my confidence. He's calling me fat, as I said. I used to get compliments and I knew he didn't like that, you see. The other day I went to the shop, I heard the little kids say, look at that fat cow or something. About me, I think. People used to tell me I was pretty, you know? So anyway, I, I try and avoid him in the house. In the evenings I've been just watching TV, you know, and having a glass of wine. I think we all enjoyed that in COVID, just a glass of wine to relax after the stress of him, quite frankly. And you know, the other night I was watching this drama and I had a bit of a sort of um, epiphany moment because there was a character on the telly and I could see that's exactly like he's doing to me. But I was watching this and I was, I was cross with her. I was almost shouting at the telly, you know, get out of this, don't take that. And the cat, he actually did exactly what he's done to me that her husband in it she'd had a few drinks and now we saw the scene we know what happened she didn't do what he said she'd done we saw that but he made her believe it and she started to to, to question and do it and that's exactly what i did the other night i'd had my one glass of wine and he said to me no no you know what you like after a glass you started that you were going at me you were doing this now look i can get a bit feisty after a glass of wine so i started to question myself but i honestly th don't think you know i'm not doing all these things that he's saying I'm doing. And I had this moment when I was watching that and I thought, you know what, I'm not just gonna shout at that woman, that's me. And I could actually get out of this. And I had a moment of clarity. <laughs> and then suddenly there's this great crash. I couldn't, I couldn't see. <laughs> there was just dust everywhere. The ceiling had come down. And there he was just lying there with a noose around his neck. I, I didn't really know what was happening at first, you know? And then when the dust had settled, I looked down and I saw that he'd landed on my dog. 